guys and girls and welcome back to the channel. In this video I'm going to explain why I've got so many cables in front of me for the HP Reverb G2. And the reason is I very recently ran into a problem after the headset has worked pretty much flawlessly since I've owned it. But that problem was apparent from day one but it didn't present itself till I updated my graphics card. Because this headset didn't turn up on time, HP gave me a refund, a small amount, back off the price of the headset. They didn't have to, and I'm not going to take it that they're giving money back to sweeten or butter people up, but they actually didn't get these out in time, and they've gave some money back. Now at the start of this video I said I ran into a problem that's been a problem since the HP Reverb G2 come out but I was not aware of the issue. When I first set up my headset, when I plugged it in, into the back of my motherboard in a USB-C slot and a USB-C port I couldn't get the headset to detect so I'd done the next best thing and plugged it into the USB-C port on my RTX, my NVIDIA RTX 2080 Ti graphics card and that had enough power and a clean port going through the PCI slot that I never ever thought about it, I never had an issue with this headset. Now if you've been watching my videos you will know I won the NVIDIA Becefta sweepstake for a chance, I didn't win the bundle, a chance to purchase the bundle containing the NVIDIA RTX 3080 Ti at retail price in the UK, it's about £1,057. That's actually less than I paid for my RTX 2080 Ti. But anyway guys, the RTX 3080 Ti on its back panel does not have a USB-C port. So when I swapped the graphics card to my kit build and ran with the RTX 3080 Ti, I had to head out and hunt down the box to find the USB-C to USB-A adapter, C to A, I think I got that right, don't shoot me if I got it wrong, but anyway, the port that adapts the USB-C into a normal USB slot. Now I didn't think any more about this, plugged it in the back of my motherboard and it would not see the headset, it was already all set up. I think I got a 7, 714M or something like that saying that USB headset wasn't detected. I tried numerous USB 3 ports and USB 3.1 ports on the back of the motherboard and this would not work, it was dead in the water. Then I discovered that if I plugged it into the front USB 3 ports that come with my case, that are attached to the motherboard by a singular cable, the headset worked. Rejoice, winning. So I went off and I'd done a session on American Truck Simulator, fantastic. What I didn't realize was that the headset would only work when there was no other devices plugged in. The minute I plugged in a uh, camera to do some recording or my, my Logitech G27 wheels and pedals with two devices on the same channel, the HP Reverb G2 went into a hissy fit and the audio started jumping between the USB 2 audio on the headset and the desktop audio and it became unplayable. Now, looking into this, and I had heard about this, I wasn't completely unaware. This is said to be linked to AMD chipsets, more recently the X570 motherboards. And I thought, well, I heard that the latest AGESA microcode for the AMD chipsets resolved this. So I went off, got the latest BIOS, installed it, rebooted my machine, I managed to get one two hour session where it didn't play up. Result, I thought it was fixed until I went on the machine the following day, plugged everything in and started getting issues with the headset and the audio dropping out again. 
So that led me to the internet to look for solutions. Now, there's many Reddit posts that people who got this headset on day one ran into this problem, and the only solution was was to use an add-in PCIe USB-C card or uh, a USB free hub. Now, reading through Reddit and other things on the internet, I was about to go and head and order something. But while looking for a hub or something of that description, uh, I came across a video from MRTV, or as I like to call him, Mr. TV, Sebastian Ang had put out basically saying that HP have acknowledged that the issue is with the old cable. And this is my old original cable here that I'm going to have to send back to HP. And the issue is um, that the signal that it sends over the USB-C on the AMD chipsets, it gets confused, it's not clear, and it doesn't work properly. Whether the hub, plugging into a hub, boosts the signal, I don't know. But I found out from uh, MR, uh, Sebastian Nang's video on MRTV that they've released a replacement cable. And I just want to draw your attention to the two boxes there. This, with the bigger box, now has a hub built into it, thus resolving the problem. Now these cables have been around for a while and were released with the uh, Omniset HP Reverb G2. But HP, more than honourable, they did not have to do this, although it, they did create a design problem with this and uh, chipsets for uh, AMD side, have honourably said, if you contact HP, they will send out a replacement cable and then you return your cable back to them. Now, when I contacted HP, I did tell them that I was documenting this for YouTube and I didn't go in there and say, do you know who I am? Do you know who I am? I'm on YouTube, give me it now. No, none of that. I just simply wanted to say, look, I'm just following this journey up on YouTube and I'm gonna report exactly what happens. Initially, it was like pulling teeth. The, the operator was nice, but they really made me jump through some hoops. I provided them the serial number of the headset. I actually took a photo just under the left side here. I provided them with my Windows version, provided them with my motherboard, I provided them with what graphics card I had. I was then asked, have I considered buying a hub? Do I own a hub? Did I go out and ask, no, none of this. Did it work? Do you have I updated Windows? Have I done this, have I done that? I, said, I turned around and said, look, you've acknowledged that it's a problem. The cable, the new one, fixes the problem. Can I just have a new cable, please? And they did tell me that the cables were not currently in stock. And I says, look, okay, I don't know how you're trying to put me off. I mentioned from the Reddit post, please check your engineering notes. And in the end, the guy was somewhat, you know, all right, we'll send you a cable out. Now, the problem is, and the reason I've ended up with three cables, the cable that they sent out to me, and I'll get a shot of it, I took some pictures on my phone, it's actually got damage to part of the wire. Uh, some of the uh, flex, some of the cable has actually been ripped open and the metal core of the shielding inside is exposed. Now I was not happy with this, I did put it up on YouTube because I think it's really poor for HP to send a cable out in this condition. Now mistakes are made, we all think we're infallible but we make mistakes daily, so I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt. Anyway, I received a cable on the Thursday. I rang HP on the Friday to report that the cable they'd sent out was damaged. They acknowledged and even said to me, um, well, you know, you're right in reporting this. It could degrade over time, break. It could end up damaging your headset. And they agreed they would send out a new cable. Well, the new cable has arrived today, 
And what I'm going to have to do is just take it off, refit it to the machine, and then I'm going to have to send both these cables back. Whether HP are refurbishing the cables that we're sending back, I don't know. It's not for me to comment. But to be honest, rather than putting it in the bin, if they can refurbish them, it makes sense. But if they are doing that, they need to have more stringent quality control and not send out damaged cables. But to be fair, HP are doing this all free of charge. And these aren't cheap, guys. So if you have an AMD system and you've been running into problems, you can claim a replacement cable. And if you do get a cable sent to you that you're not happy with, send it back. If I was going to sell the HP Reverb G2, I want my cable in perfect condition. I really do look after my equipment. Anyway, I've spoken enough. The reason that I have made this video is because there are so many YouTube channels out there and so much content, it's easy to miss important informative videos. And the more YouTubers that put this out there and get this word out there, the better. So guys, it's really important when you plug everything back in, give it a test. So I've just put my headset on, it's the usual. Look side to side, side to side, down at the floor, back up, and I am in the Windows Mixed Reality, and that looks good to me. So I'm just going to give that a play test very shortly. Now I really must thank HP. It's not a lot of big tech companies that do put their hands up and say, look, we're aware of the issue, we fixed it, we're aware that there's people out there who have invested, we will send you a replacement. I think really, woo, we've got to give HP a round of applause for that. Still some frustrations with the headset, again, that's more linked with Windows Mixed Reality, but I will do a final review on this, a final like review soon, but I haven't got rid of it guys. I am more than happy with my sim racing experiences with this VR headset. Guys, I hope this video has been informative to you and I'm going to wrap it up there. And now that I'm fixed, I can start sharing more sim racing content with you because I did promise that when I got my upgrade and my graphics card I'm going to start racing online and I'm going to do that. It's enough time of playing on my own with other friends and that I've got to break into this wider racing community. So ever guys thank you for watching maybe this helped you out give the video a thumbs up and please if you're new to the channel and you've enjoyed the content go and have a look at some of my other stuff and please consider subscribing. See you very soon in more videos to come. Peace out.